much. Over 70 years, Formula One's calendar has changed significantly compared to those halcyon days. There's three times as many races, there's five different continents, and the Indy 500 doesn't count towards the championship. Although the likes of Monaco, Silverstone, Spa and Monza still remain on the calendar to this day, other circuits have come and gone for multiple different reasons. And there's plenty of those that we'd like to see make a return, and although that might not be possible in their current form, we can but dream. We've not added Hockenheim here since it's on and off like a light switch, but we've picked a selection of circuits that have been off the table for quite a while. Here's 10 circuits we'd like to see back in Formula 1. Number 1. Hareth The Hareth circuit is one that's commonly in use today, hosting all manner of motorcycle racing and single-seater races and tests, and it was a favourite for Formula 1 in winter testing too. But the circuit in the south of Spain hasn't hosted a Formula 1 race since 1997, which was infamous for the title decision collision between Michael Schumacher and Jacques Villeneuve at the dry sack corner. Still with the FIA Grade 1 designation, Hareth could still theoretically host a Formula 1 round, and as recently as 2017 held a standalone event for Formula 2 and GP3. It's held its fair share of memorable F1 races, along with the aforementioned 1997 finale, and its first race in 1986 can also be held to the same high esteem. A phenomenal battle between Ayrton Senna and Nigel Mansell ended with Senna taking victory by just 0.014 seconds. Sure, the circuit might not suit the current Formula 1 cars and the straights might be a little bit on the short side, but the challenges set to be presented by the 2022 regulations could mean that Jerez returns to the menu, especially as Barcelona's future looks a little hazy. Number 2. Kyle Army Formula 1 has races on every continent except two, Antarctica and Africa. And while F1 may be a few years away from a penguin bothering Grand Prix in the snow, Africa has at least hosted races in the past, most recently at Kailami in 1993. Having undergone a few changes through the years as the classic circuit was ditched at the end of 1987, Kailami held the South African Grand Prix on its return to the calendar in the early 1990s, following the end of apartheid, but has not done so since. Expected returns to the calendar have never materialised, although Kyle Army will host a race for the 2020-21 WEC season following a number of upgrades to the circuit. Currently, the circuit only holds an FIA Grade 2 licence and would require reinvestment to upgrade it for F1 purposes, but Zandvoort underwent a similar renovation to make it to the F1 calendar. Demand for a race in Kyle Army would increase dramatically if a South African driver was to make it to the grid. Currently, Jody Schechter's last race in 1980 was the last time a driver from South Africa took part in a Grand Prix, but for completionists' sake, ticking off another continent would surely make F1 a real world championship. Number 3. Imola While Imola is a good hour and a half's drive away from the microstate of San Marino, it hasn't ever stopped it from taking on the tiny nation's name and thrusting it onto the global motorsport scene. Although Imola will probably never shake off the shadow of the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix weekend, the circuit has had plenty of thrilling races of its own accord. And it seems that every year Imola is primed to take over from Monza as the host of the Italian Grand Prix, before the high-speed venue on the outskirts of Milan earns another stay of execution. It also suggested that it would be ready to take over from the Chinese Grand Prix at the start of the coronavirus outbreak, but the accelerating spread soon put paid to that solution. As has been suggested for Jerez, Imola might not be a great fit for the current breed of F1 cars, but when ground effects make their return and F1 cars are more challenging to drive in 2022, it could honestly factor as a serious option for F1 once again in the future. Overtaking is a challenge, and a thrilling battle in the 2005 race between Fernando Alonso and Michael Schumacher could be frustrating in equal measure, but it's a shame that Imola hasn't been on the calendar since 2006. Number 4. Long Beach Firstly, I want to begin with a personal admission that I want to get off my chest. I don't like the circuit of the Americas. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just don't. It's a mishmash of other circuits that doesn't add up to the sum of its parts, there's no scenery, and I just don't get the appeal of it. I'm sorry. I do, however, love Long Beach, and IndyCar's annual visit always throws up a lot of fun. And back in the 1970s and 1980s, F1 cars used to line up on Shoreline Drive too. And it always threw up something interesting, a three-way battle for the lead in 1977 ended up with Mario Andretti beating Nicky Lauda by less than a second, Andrea de Cesaris lost concentration and crashed while in with a shot of victory in 1982, 
And Long Beach's final appearance on the F1 grid ended with John Watson taking the win from 22nd on the grid. Plus, there's the ocean views, the city skyline and the fountain as well. Far more scenery than Austin's circuit could ever hope to shake a stick at. Please, Mr. Kerry, can we have Long Beach back? Number 5. Riverside Staying in California for this one then, the Riverside International Raceway only hosted one Formula 1 race back in 1960. Hosting that year's season finale, the Riverside course was an unfamiliar one to most teams, except the little scarab outfit who were based a stone's throw away from the track. Local racer Dan Gurney was the favourite at Riverside, a course which had a tricky set of S's, a collection of hairpins and a booming 1.1 mile straight into the ninth corner, a circuit that could arguably fit the bill in today's Formula 1. Ultimately, the race was won by Lotus driver Sterling Moss, although he'd benefited from champion Jack Brabham having trouble with overfilling his car with fuel, which was leaking out of his Cooper and spitting flames. With the backdrop of the Box Springs Mountain, Riverside had a certain charm, but was engulfed by the growth of the town of Merino Valley. It was closed in 1989, later becoming a shopping mall. A plan to revive the circuit by building the same layout in a different location had been developed a few years back, but ultimately never came to fruition. Number 6. Nürburgring No, we're not putting the Nordschleife back on the calendar, that would just be asking for trouble. But the Grand Prix course? Yeah, sure, why not? The Nürburgring hasn't been on the calendar since 1913 after hitting financial trouble, but has hosted races at the German Grand Prix, the European Grand Prix, and even the Luxembourg Grand Prix back in 1997. But it's hosted some absolute corkers, particularly in changeable conditions. The 1999 race was one of Formula 1's most eventful races, which resulted in the Stewart team's one and only F1 win, after Frentzen, Coulthard, Fisichella and Ralph Schumacher all retired from the lead in mixed weather. Then there was the 2005 race, where Kimi Raikkonen's suspension dramatically failed on the final lap while he was leading, handing the win to title rival Fernando Alonso, and the 2007 race was famous for a sudden downpour, which let debutante Marcus Winkelhock take the lead. In dry conditions, the Nürburgring is a perfectly decent circuit, but seems to have a penchant for dishing out a stunning wet race, and it certainly has a place in Formula 1. Number 7. Istanbul Park Another admission, I don't love the Istanbul circuit, but a lot of people do. So just for you, let's talk Turkey. When Istanbul first appeared in Formula 1 in 2005, it was part of a new wave of circuits, including Bahrain and Shanghai, designed by Hermann Tilke. While Tilke's circuit designs are like Marmite, you either love them or you hate them, Istanbul had a special weapon up its sleeve, Turn 8. Turn 8 is a quadruple apex right-hander which tests the limits of every car and driver, and for some earned a place among the pantheon of great high-speed corners. Having been widely copied elsewhere, with a right-handed attempt at Austin hardly quite capturing the same imagination, the original Turn 8 is missed by many. The first corner was also particularly tricky, a tight left-hander sweeps downhill to catch a lot of drivers out, creating plenty of first corner carnage at the start of the race. It was rumoured a couple of years ago that Turkey would return to the calendar, and many would not begrudge seeing the return of Istanbul to the parade. Number 8. Fuji It's amazing to think that for a circuit as legendary as the Fuji Speedway, it has only ever hosted four Formula 1 races. Two came in the 1970s, in which James Hunt famously won the 1976 title in absolutely treacherous conditions, slipping back to third place as rival Nicky Lauda withdrew after two laps. The other pair of visits to Fuji were in 2007 and 2008, the first of those once again in incredibly wet conditions, and both bore famous moments. In 2007, Sebastian Vettel crashed into the back of Mark Webber as the two ran second and third, while 2008's race was controversial for the decision to levy a harsh penalty on Sebastian Borde, who had Felipe Massa chop him off as he exited the pits. Fuji's last appearances on the F1 calendar were meant to be part of an alternating deal with Suzuka, but as circuit owners Toyota left the championship at the end of 2009, Suzuka has remained on the calendar ever since. Everyone loves Suzuka though, and we're not suggesting that one should replace the other. But if the two could coexist, much like Aida and Suzuka could in the 1990s, that could certainly work too. Number 9. Adelaide to Formula 1 fans of a certain age, F1 season should end at Adelaide. Indeed, through the 11 races it held in F1 from 1985 to 1995, all were season finale events. The fast but tight nature of the course, which was also demanding in equal measure, always threw up something spectacular, most notably when title fights went down to the wire. 
1986's title battle between Prost and Mansell was called off when Mansell's tyre, colossally, exploded down the straights to hand Prost the honours that year. 1994's race was another example, where Schumacher and Hill collided. While the 1995 race, completely dominated by Hill, who lapped everybody else twice, was famous for a number of high-profile collisions. Adelaide made its final bow and ceded the Australian Grand Prix to Melbourne in 1996. And although Albert Park has become a traditional season opener in modern times, the season is certainly poorer for losing its Adelaide finale. Number 10. Sepang The Malaysian Grand Prix was something of a modern classic, and its departure from the F1 grid was a little bit of a travesty. Built for the 1999 season, it's considered as one of Tilka's best tracks, and the challenging, sweeping nature of the circuit frequently delivered good races. The opening corner, which drops downhill before an abrupt left-hand hairpin, would reward and punish the brave in equal measure, and drivers could also race side by side in turns 5 and 6. After the move to the early season, the Sepang circuit could also throw up mixed conditions, and the race in 2001 was particularly notable, when both Ferrari drivers hurled their cars off the road in the early laps, before later recovering to record a 1-2 finish. The race at Sepang was also stopped in 2009 as the rain became torrential, and drivers could barely see amid the gallons of spray ultimately yielding half points, as it had not reached the 75% cutoff. Then there was the race in 2012, where Sauber's Sergio Perez battled valiantly against Fernando Alonso for the win, and the multi-21 controversy of 2013, where Sebastian Vettel defied team orders to pass teammate Mark Webber for victory. Oh, Sepang, we miss you. Are there any other circuits you'd like to see back in Formula 1? Let us know in the comments below.